Great morning to y'all. I hope y'all woke up grateful for your morning. I hope you've reminded yourself of all of the things that you have to be grateful for. I hope that every time you see a limit, you get creative. I hope every time you see an obstacle, it's an, you realize it's an opportunity to grow, to evolve. I hope that every time you see a setback, you analyze. And you understand that it's time for redirection in your life. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys are getting the most out of your days. And I hope that you've been setting a high vibe. And I hope that you're not allowing anything to shift your inner peace. And uh, I also hope that you're not giving away your power to anything. All right? And that we do that all the time. All right? We're not exempt from that. We're, we're not exempt from the transactional interactions that we have with the people that we do. Whether it's uh, our work life or whether it's our home life or whether it's, you know, our social life or, you know, whatever the case is. Anyway, you're not exempt from what you're feeling inside either. Right? And that's completely on you, what you choose to embody. As your energy of your being and how you maneuver it and what you choose for yourself. So, I hope that you're not making excuses for yourself. And I hope that you're getting stuff done. Okay? There's a lot of people that are suffering from anxiety right now. I want to let you all know that that's not something that you have to sit with. Right? When, uh, you know, things feel overwhelming or we're fearful of anything, panic can set in. But I want you to understand something this morning. If you guys are having these anxiety attacks just freely and you don't understand why, well, then it's become an automatic programming system within you. Okay? What do I mean by that? Well, we do things automatically because of repetition okay repetition is installation so every time you get anxious about something and you embody that as something that is okay well and it keeps happening over and over and over again your body gets conditioned to believe that it has to have these panic attacks every time there it, something triggers it okay it's an automatic response reaction to stuff now so it's really important that when you feel this stuff coming on, because we all feel it coming on. I used to suffer severe anxiety. Okay? People may not believe it. You know, they think, ah, oh, confident, strong Toby. Yeah, but Toby suffered severe anxiety, crippling anxiety, many years ago. Okay? And I had to learn how to talk to myself. And I had to learn how to talk myself down from a lot. Okay, and I think that's why maybe I can keep going and I can endure a lot more than the average person. Okay, because of the conditioning that I've forced on myself. So, yeah, we all get anxious. But, you know, it shouldn't be to an unhealthy crippling state. Okay, so when you feel this stuff coming on, I want you to center yourself. What do I mean by that? Breathe. Because when you breathe... And you concentrate solely on your breathing, no matter how your heart's racing and no matter how you're sweating, no matter what, what is going on, you can calm that down. But you have to believe that. Okay? And that's serious. Because if you're saying in your forebrain, okay, well, yeah, I can talk myself down from the anxiety, but you're in your belief systems, you don't believe it? Well, there's a contradiction there and you're going to have a really hard time. Okay, things have to jive. Things have to be in sync. Simple as that. All right? But just breathe. When there's anything happening, you know, we get overwhelmed or we get stressed out and we want to just react. Don't. Take the time. Just take the time and relax and respond. Simple as that. That's all you got to do. But breathe. Concentrate on your breathing. You know, there's nothing outside of you that has more power Hey, Adi, great morning. I'm happy to see you. 
but seriously, focus on your breathing. When that heart rate, the heart rate starts picking up and you start feeling yourself not feeling right, take that pause. Take that pause. Force it upon yourself because you have to disrupt the automatic conditioning. You see, and that's what happens if we repetitively keep getting anxious. Our body installs that in our system as an operating system. And that's how your body learns to operate, is having these anxiety attacks or panic attacks. So, no medication is going to stop that. It's going to lessen what's happening to you, but it doesn't change what's happening to you. Okay? So, you really got to take that time. And you got to pause. You really have to. Because you feel it coming on before it's out of control. You know, and you can distract yourself and you can consume your thoughts with whatever, but it's not going to change the physio physiology of what's going on. Hey, sit down. I love you. <laughs> That's my stepmom out there. I love you. <laughs> okay, yeah, so back to the anxiety. Um, no, but seriously, when you feel that stuff coming on, you have to force yourself to disrupt what is going on. Because if you don't, it's an automatic system that's going to play out. And it will take you to places that obviously you don't want to be, right? So what happens, panic's going to set in after. Because when we start not feeling right and we don't understand why we're feeling like that, or even if we know what's triggering us but we feel out of control, hey, it takes you to a place that's really unhealthy inside your mind, inside your being, and this stuff creates feelings within your body. So you can't do that to yourself. You have to take a pause. And we all, it's our thoughts that escalate anxiety. Because we feel it coming on. And then we amplify it by, oh, okay, I'm feeling anxious. Oh, oh okay, I'm feeling anxious. And you're actually putting gas to the fire by redirecting your energy to that. But if you feel yourself getting anxious, but you can take that pause and not react to it and say, oh, okay. Well, body, you're supposed to work for me and not against me. So I think now I'm going to breathe. Talk yourself down. It seems crazy, but talk yourself down. We don't talk to anybody in this life as much as we talk to our own self. Talk yourself down. Focus on your breathing. That's all you got to do. You feel the anxiety, condition yourself to automatically stop. That's it. Stop. Take that pause. Yeah, your body's going to do what it's doing, but you can override that. Simple. But it's with the things that you're going to tell yourself. First thing you got to do is tell yourself to breathe. Breathe. Air is sustaining your life. What happens when you get anxious? You feel constricted. Okay? So you don't get the oxygen in. You don't get, hey, there's a lot of things that happen. Anxiety, you get all tense. Right? No. Open it up. Breathe. Okay? Um, actually, Wendell's ready to come on this morning, so I'm going to grab him on and uh, get him on here. So until he jumps on, like I was saying before, anxiety is real, guys. But you got to put the disruption into it. Okay? Disrupt that pattern. Hey, great morning, Wendell. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. I was talking about anxiety. So just give me a second. I just want to finish up and we'll jump on. Okay? Okay. So everybody watching, look, anxiety seriously is real. When you feel that stuff coming on, you have to stop. That's why I've been telling you guys, don't react to things, respond, okay? So respond to your anxiety by breathing. There's nothing more powerful than your, the power of what's going on inside of you. You've got to condition yourself to automatically switch it. Don't allow the thoughts in between, all right? Anyway, we'll get this anxiety stuff under control. If you guys need help, reach out to me. I suffered with anxiety for a long time. All right, but I've got that stuff under control. All right, love and light, my brother. I'm happy to see you this morning. Yes. So uh, I saw one of the posts about your game thing about uh, 
what was it? Something about a pole would be your most suitable job. Oh, I love that. Can I? So I responded, "Can I sell tickets?" <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, oh, I loved it. It's like sometimes, like we get in, we get so like not bored, but you know, you just kind of like, oh, I wonder what this is gonna say, kind of thing. You know what I mean? And that's more or the less of it. And then sometimes it'll, it'll give me these answers that I'm like, what? You know? So those are the ones that I actually post because people are like, because people know me, right? So, but yeah, it's just out of fun too. Like that one, I was just like, okay, I have to, I have to, I have to post this one. And then like, I saw another, I saw another one of your posts. Like this morning, I actually took, you know, I came on later because I knew you'd be on later. So I went, you know, I kind of went through and I saw another one talking about um, some people don't believe you're single, but you need to be something, something to have a minute with you. So I was like, what, what? Uh, okay, cool. I feel good this morning. <laughs> yeah, it's, you have to be uh, dark, dark side Yoda or Yoda on the dark side. <laughs> anyway, I'm really happy to see you. I'm really grateful for your presence. Thank you. Yeah. So what do you want to talk about this morning? We didn't set a topic yesterday. I ran on with some anxiety because there's a couple of people that have reached out to me having a really, really hard time with anxiety. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah extremely yeah. hard. It's crippling. They've had to go and get meds and stuff, and it's not. It's more than one person. So when it's at that point, I want them to realize that, yeah, okay, for you, you can use it for that little moment of transition, but you got to get a grip on it because actually the meds don't help. What happens is your anxiety amplifies and you don't even feel it happening because you're on meds. So, yeah, I just had to run with a little bit of anxiety talk this morning and just let them know, hey, breathe. That's all the medication that you need is your own breath. That's true. Stop you know, yeah, both my daughters are dealing with that right now, both of them. But well, my youngest everybody, it seems like there's a lot of stress in the younger generation that we didn't have. Yeah. And we don't see it because we come from a generation where, hey, we didn't have it easy. Like just the generation that we grew up in. That just that time frame. It's a lot harder than it is now. We can like just communication factors, and you know what? It, like, but I also, don't know. It's the world too. Like, there's a lot of things that are going on in the world too. That not just only the younger generation is uh, is is dealing with anxiety. Like us as in our generation, we're dealing with that stuff too. I mean, when you look at gas prices, shortage of food, like living situation, increase in rent. Like, there's a lot of things that are going on right now that will cause anxiety to the masses <laughs> and maybe that's what the maybe that's what the dark side is all about you know what i mean i don't know you know what i'm glad you brought that up i'm really glad you brought that up because yeah i you know what you're right and those are those aren't things that i was looking at it's, and yeah i guess there is a lot of anxiety with what's going on yep and this goes back to what i was saying i think a while ago is that you know when we're growing up, we're always taught that, you know, uh, we control what our, what happens in our life. And we're, we're supposed to make the best, not make the best, but we're supposed to be the best, you know, in everything we do and everywhere we, excuse me, everywhere we go. And a lot of people don't realize that that statement in itself is like easier said than done. Yes, we do have the power of decisions. And yes, we have the power of, you know, to a certain degree, we have the power of manifesting things into existence, but for the most part, we have we don't we don't have any control over that. Like that, whatever's going to happen is going to happen, and that's and that's as easy as, as I can put it. You know, a lot of people are struggling too because you know they're trying too hard. You know, they want to they want to you know they want to be successful for their self and for their children if they have multiple children. You know, they want to. You know, um, they want to be like self-sufficient. Basically, is what it is. And you know, sometimes it's 
I mean, it's a good idea and everything, but in reality, if it can't happen, it can't happen. It's just that simple. Yeah, but. and it's true. And instead of actually, that's a good point that you make, because when we get these setbacks, a lot of us, we well, I know me personally, I'll speak from personal experience. Yes, life is overwhelming a little bit. Yes, there's anxiety in my life. Of course there is. I'm not exempt from that. Just with my losing the feeling on this side of my face, that's anxiety enough. Every time I go outside and I see somebody in the past couple of weeks, it's, oh, Toby, why is your face like that? And I've had to repetitively yeah. go over it and over it and over it and over it with how many people. So that causes anxiety with me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that makes me not want to leave my house. Because I don't want to keep repeating this stuff over and over. and That's anxiety alone. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, we all have different magnitudes of anxiety going on. So, and it's real. It's real. It, as real as it gets. <laughs> yeah. But I guess that's, uh, you know, I think the only thing that gets me through all of this stuff, Wendell, is that I have to remind myself every day, literally, like I come out here and I say it, that I'm grateful for another day of life. And you know what? It sounds crazy, but I am grateful that this stuff in my face is actually, I'm going to lose the feeling rather than it go through to my brain. Okay. So I'm grateful for it. But it's like, I got to remind myself every day because it's so much easier to go back to my old way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're you know? And it's funny because a lot of people don't realize this also is that, you know, I, I, I've come to the realization that the majority of the people who end up having cancer or dying from cancer are the ones that are, they're, they're called worry wards, you know, like they worry about everything, they're stressed out about everything, and you know, like, I, I don't think, I don't think people really understand that stress actually causes cancer. Yeah, it does. You can get cancer from stressing out. Like a lot of people don't seem to. Well, cancer is just okay because our cells in our body, our our blood cells, are round. So cancer cells just they they deform, right? And they stick together instead of bounce off of each other. Right. Yeah. Everybody just thinks, oh, well, you know, it's all about smoking and. You no. Know, nope. um, well, carcinogens, carcinogens, like you know, obviously, if you're yeah, for sure. Carcinogens every day. Yeah, of course, you know, carbon monoxide, same thing. But, you know, at the same token, it's like, you know, it's part of the, it's part of the, it's part of your genetics, right? Genetic breakdown. Okay. Audie says on here, he says, I have to keep really busy. So I am not thinking about anxiety all the time. I did that too, Audie. But you run yourself into the ground. Right. You have to face the anxiety. You got to take your power back from it, literally. And I did that. I kept myself busy to avoid it. It's avoiding it. Don't do that. It makes it harder to deal with because you get so used to avoiding that yeah. then you procrastinate with dealing with it and you only choose to deal with it should it arise. So you can't, you really got to focus on that and say you just as if you had somebody, let's say in your life that was disrupting your life and you'd address them, you have to address your anxiety the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Wendell, you want to add on that? Uh, yeah, so it's just kind of like, you know, um, like you said, you know, if you stress out about anxiety in itself, you're just adding to it. So. Me personally, I find that, you know, I remember for actually a while, you know, a lot of people were talking about, uh, you know, taking deep breaths, you know, whenever you have, when you feel it coming on and you just kind of have to take deep breaths, that's the kind of a way that you regulate your stuff, right? Because again, anxiety basically is just, you know, your blood pressure and your, whatchamacallit, your uh, heart rate increasing, right? So I find that once you, you know, oh, you 
acknowledge that it's coming, you know? Some people, they're like, oh, here comes that freaking anxiety again. All right, I'll just write it out or I'll just deal with it. And it's like, no, that's not how you, that's not how you're going to fix it, right? People think that that's how they fix it, but that's not how they fix it. The way to fix it is to just kind of, oh, I see it's coming. Okay, I'm going to make sure that it doesn't come at all. So let me just calm down. What am I anxious about, you know? Am I anxious about, you know, who I'm going to meet in like five, ten minutes? Um, you know, an interview I'm going to have at a job or, you know, um, how I just got notification that, you know, my service might be canceled due to a non-payment of a bill or something like, you know, you just kind of have to, okay, you know what, like, this is not what's going to happen. I, I, I have to control what the negative thoughts that's coming and stop it in its tracks and say, okay, this is not going to happen. You know what? I'm going to be positive about this. I'm going to take a deep breath. And you know what? I'm going to hope for the best. And whatever happens is going to happen, but I'm going to be positive about it. So now you go about your energies positive, positive. And I don't know, for me personally, I find that when I do that, at the very, very, very last second, when I think that stuff's going to hit the fan, that's when everything comes into, it just fixes itself. And you're like, oh, oh, well, thank you, universe. Like, wow, well, I didn't see that coming, right? So I think that's how it, I think that's how it is. And um, actually, um, I will say this to Adi because I just noticed one of his comments there. Um, meditation does actually work. Meditation is a very powerful thing, but only if you do it properly. People think that, oh, I'm just going to sit here quiet and close my eyes and not think of anything, and that's meditating. No, it's actually not. When you, when but you, that's how somebody could start. Sorry, yes. I just had to add no, that. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It, it's a good. It, you're right. That's it. Is a good way to start practicing because eventually, yes, absolutely, you can. Because some can't silence. even sit still and quiet, in silence with themselves. But it's also too like with meditation, you have to do it a couple of times because you can't just do it the first time and hit it right off. Because you have to really understand the whole process, you know. Because I, I I remember the first time I meditated and like I thought I was meditating when actually I wasn't, and then when I found out the proper way to meditate and I meditated the first time, oh my goodness, like I literally felt like I left into another portal and then came back like recharged. And that's yep. what it's supposed to be, you know? So, so that's when I knew that I did it proper. So yes, absolutely. Um, meditation is a good thing to do because again, it kind of, actually what meditation is, and, and I wish a lot of more people knew about meditation because I think, Meditation does a lot more benefit than medication. <laughs> Can I add something yeah, to this? Okay. Meditation, for anybody out there who hasn't meditated, please do not get frustrated even after the first 20 times you try. Listen, you have to learn how to be quiet within yourself. Meditation is so that you can connect to your higher being. Your higher self, your energetic self, that's giving you this life experience. Yeah. Now, with the minute you try the first time, your body is going to, oh, get up and go do the dishes. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Oh, my leg is itchy. Oh, and it's going to throw you in every other direction but reconnection with yourself. Why? Because that's your ego. And your ego has control over you. And it doesn't want to lose its power. So if you can get past the ego and shut your mind down, then you will connect. But until you can do that, you will not meditate. And you will get very frustrated trying to do it. If you don't understand what's happening to you when you do sit down to meditate. Yep. Okay? So... Learn about the ego and the control of what it has over you before you try to attempt meditation and get so down on yourself thinking, oh, well, I can't do this and there's something wrong with me. No, that's just telling you how much control your ego has over you. Okay. <laughs> I had to. I had to add that because, Wendell, I tried to meditate for a long time and I couldn't get it. My subconscious, my ego tried to throw me everywhere but in connection to my higher self. It's it's not an it's not an easy thing to to 
It's not an easy thing to do. Like I said, you can't just do it on the first hop and be like, okay, you have it mastered. This is something that you have to practice over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And like when I was, um, well, I'll tell you the story about that. So when I was uh, living in Ottawa, because I was in Ottawa for a little bit, and I was living with this guy and his girlfriend, and his guy, and this guy was learning to, uh, well, he wasn't learning, but he, he was more into the Reiki energy kind of thing, right? And I was kind of fascinated by it because, you know, there were these, like, ruins and all this, like, physical stuff, like stones and all that kind of stuff, right? And it's actually through him that I actually have this appreciation for rocks and stuff. Like, I have a little um, selenite station, I call it. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, so then he started talking about energy and all this kind of stuff. And then one day he was like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to play this video for you to watch. And I was like, okay. So he plays the video and it's this like really soft piano sound. And this lady is just talking like, you know, breathe, you know, breathe in, breathe out, da, da, da. you know? And I'm just like, at first I was just like, Okay, this is awkward, you know, let me just try to get it, get used to it. So I was doing what she was doing and I started feeling anxiety, like right away, right? So just as the instant that I was feeling anxiety, she said in the video, it was like she was there. She was like, she was like, well, she goes, you're going to feel a little awkward right now, but just let it go, you know, take a deep breath. And I was just like, wait a minute, how the hell did she know that I was feeling that right at that moment? So I put one and one together and I said, okay, so obviously this must be a common thing that people feel if she's putting it in an instructional video on how to meditate. So I said, okay, so now I'm doing it. So now I'm like, okay, so now I know I'm doing the right thing. So I'm like, let's continue, right? So then I started listening to, um, um, I can't remember what the name of the group is, but um, there was this band that started playing like this weird kind of music, right? And uh he used to he used to be into that kind of stuff. So I used to listen to the music and I'm like, no, this is not it, you know? And then one day I was listening to classical music and I was just like sitting down and, and I actually just slowly fell into meditating without without the plan of meditation, right? So all of a sudden I was like, and I got out of it and I was just like, wow, I said, I did not know that classical music can actually bring that out of me, right? So I started using classical music as my reference to kind of practice and ever since then it's like i'm i keep getting like deeper 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 you know i haven't i haven't done it in a, in a little while like i think the last time i did it was like two weeks two weeks ago but i but i was planning on getting back into it so it's funny that we're talking about this now because i was actually thinking like yeah i should probably get back into meditation because when you wake up in the morning you feel like you know you feel you feel rested but you don't feel like you know balanced right Whereas if you meditate and then you go to sleep or even in the, or vice versa, you get up and then you meditate and you're like, okay, whew, you know, like your, your brain feels more clear, you know, crazy. So, yeah, so that, uh, I hope that, uh, helped, uh, Mr. Adi there with his, with, with his, um, interest in meditation. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I'm glad we touched on the anxiety topic this morning, honestly. I really did because uh, there's been numerous people that are reaching out to me about it. And and it's like they're embarrassed and they tell me it's debilitating and it's they can't get through their days and they're medicating themselves and they are actually have used medication for anxieties but now are even trying to self-medicate because that's not working and i'm like oh no 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 don't go down that path because you will never get out of it you know like so that's why i'm really trying this morning to let people know hey just disrupt that you know because it's just like our bodies when we're you know the re repetition installation it becomes an automatic program sometimes and the littlest yeah. thing can trigger it and you don't even know what's triggering it. You can't identify it because it's gotten so out of control. And there's a lot of people now that I've noticed that are waking up and their first thoughts of the day are carrying them through anxiety through the whole day. These Now they're, it's to the point where they're not being triggered by things. They're anxious constantly. Mm -hmm. No living organism can live in that state without crumbling eventually, right? It disrupts every system in your body. 
and the wear and tear on that stuff for your body is real yeah. so that's why i'm just i'm really happy we got to talk about it this morning because i really don't like people suffering from it i know what it feels like and it's just it's well, it, you know it's yeah it's, it's actually kind of funny because like when when i heard you talking about that stuff i was just like that's weird because just last night i was hanging with my daughter my youngest one and uh she's like pretty much going through that right now you know and and, it, and it's it's overwhelming i mean i'm proud of her in a sense that i could see that she's handling it to the best to, to her of her ability you know because she's just a trooper like that but you know she uh i guess that's from her dad actually but i think just to say but like she um she like i think i told you a little bit about the situation with her sister and the addiction right so this is the one that's dealing with that so anyway so you know she was telling me some stories and i just said you know what sweetheart like you know you're doing the right thing you know all you have to do is just you know focus on you and try not to let this you know medication or whatever you're taking like control you you know you're not supposed to be dependent on medication you know and i don't know i me personally i like i would rather you know i have a headache i'm 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 looking for the ice pack that's the first thing i look for is the ice pack if i can't find the ice pack if i have ice cubes then you know i just like break them up i just chew ice whatever and um does that work for your headaches it works a bit and then if it if it's still lingering then what i usually do is i just take like a really hot shower and i just make i just put like my head i let the hot water hit the back of my neck and i just kind of you know get it in there like my pressure is not my my water pressure is not that great but still you know it's just a heat factor and then what i do is um after that i'll just like just go lay down in my bed and just either put my pillow over my head or just make sure there's like i'm in darkness and then i just kind of like take deep breaths and just keep telling myself like this is gonna pass this is gonna pass this is gonna pass, this is gonna pass. i didn't hear you just now no, you I keep said, telling yourself what this is going to pass like i keep okay it's like, gonna pass this is gonna pass it's gonna go away and then eventually it kind of comes down a little bit but the, the only issue that i have with that with doing it that way is that it, it'll still be there a little bit and it'll stay there for a long time but it's more bearable than it was before and me i'm just a coper like that like if i have pain you know i'll cope with i'll cope with it you know? um audi i want to address your thing here about i believe that a lot of people smoke pot yes they do for anxiety but it's a misconception it's a misconception. Anything that you smoke actually raises your anxiety, whether it's pot, whether it's cigarettes, whether it's anything. No matter what it is, if you're smoking it, you're raising your anxiety. Why? Because pot is a depressant. Okay, so if you're having problems with anxiety, well, don't pick up smoking pot to cure the anxiety because it won't happen. You got to address the anxiety head on. I always thought pot was a stimulant, though, not a depressant. No, it's not. Cocaine is a stimulant. Pot is a depressant. Hmm. Yeah. Pot's a depressant. And how do I know that? Because since the heart attack, I'm not allowed to smoke pot. Okay, but that's just you, though. No, that's any. If you check it up, anybody who has a heart condition should not smoke pot at all should not do anything thc because it depresses the system it raises the anxiety and forces your heart to work overtime yeah but like you said if you have a heart condition not everybody has a heart condition no but that's what i'm saying but for anxiety but anything but what i mean by with the heart condition with it's only since i did the research on it that i can understand it through learning from it through the heart attack but it doesn't need to have somebody to have a heart attack literally anybody who smokes pot it's a depressant it brings you down it doesn't get you high it brings you down but you just feel like you're high hmm. Hmm. i don't know okay do the research well, I, I, did. Mean, I mean i mean i did it's it's I'm an adamant pot lover, okay? I did the research. <laughs> but it's subjective to different people. It works differently with different people though. 
Actually, I've no, never, it doesn't. I've never been depressed smoking. No, drink. but it. what I'm not talking about depressed. Depressed is a state. I'm talking about a depressant on your body. So that's a different thing altogether. Like being depressed is different than your system having a depressant. There's, it's different. Depression is a state. It's a chemical state. You feel depressed. You feel sad. You feel whatever, whatever. So it's the same word, but it's different. Well, it's it's a different meaning when it comes to, yeah, mm -hmm. the the effect of pot on your body. Yeah, it's a depressant. Okay. All right. I I love pot. I have all my life. I had to do the homework. I had to do the research. I, you know, before it was legal, Wendell, I love sm I love smoking pot. Hey, I'm not going to, I don't deny that. <laughs> Why did you like smoking pot then? Because I didn't like my life. But what did Simple. pot do? What did, what did it do for you? Um, Actually, pot, because I'm allergic to painkillers and have been all my life, okay. I resorted to pot for my medication. So it's kind of different. Yeah, I, I've i gone through a lot of health problems in my life, and it started from a very young age. Like, my knees were wrecked from skiing, uh, you know, in the townships as a kid. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I picked up pot, and I just, hey, so that was notice, my easiest. Do you, notice a difference? do you notice a difference between regular marijuana and medical mar marijuana? Yeah. Well, I notice a difference between outdoor and indoor. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. Though. I'm talking about no, but that's medicine. but this is what I mean. Though medical herb, medical herb is, uh, yeah, they they play with it, they do what, but there's a lot of that stuff I can't smoke. I can't smoke that stuff. It sends me into an asthma attack. So yeah, really? I prefer the outdoor, which is no chemicals, no alterations, no da 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 da. You know, okay, I that's it. what I meant. Okay, okay, that makes sense. I thought you were just talking about regular, but yeah, now, now that makes sense. I get it now. Okay. You know, because a lot of people think that outdoor is a lesser grade of pot, but it's not. It's actually grown without all the shit. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll be very loud and proud. I have a, I've got my license to grow should I want to. Hmm. That's nice. Interesting. Yeah. Why did you get, why did you get that? Because medically, when I was, I lost my mobility. I should have been in a wheelchair because of um, degenerative disc disease in my lower back. And to the point where I had to give up driving for a bit and I had a wheelchair in the house and all kinds of stuff. But I overcame that. But that was very painful for me also. And like I said, no painkillers. And I had to use pot. I had to. There's no way I could function without it to the point where my um, my uh, orthopedic surgeon, she's the one that prescribed me pot before it was even legal. Because she said, Toby, we have to manage your pain. And I was like, ah, screw it. And she was like, no, it's getting out. It's It's affecting your body now. The pain constantly, it's affecting everything else in your body. So that's why. But when it came to anxiety, all it did for me was amplify the anxiety. Because you got to deal with the anxiety. You can't mask that stuff with anything. No, and, that, and, that, and, that's, what, and that's the thing that, that, that kind of irks me the most with people is just that, you know, when they say, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I battled anxiety, you know. And it's like, how can you battle something that you that you avoid, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like if I, if I'm avoiding somebody coming at me, I'm not going to say that I beat them, you know, I just avoided them, right? So I'm just saying it like that, just to kind of get the point across that, you know, yeah, you can have ownership over it. Yeah, you can have control over it. The question is, to what extent are you, like, are you, how much of it can you take, basically, is what it is, you know? It's like, I was talking with my daughter last night and she was just like, so I asked her and I said, so what are you doing like to, to deal with this? You know? And she's like, 
oh, well, you know, I'm, not, I'm taking medication. I said, okay, but sweetheart, you can't be dependent on this medication. Let's just say for whatever reason, you forget <laughs> your, your medication at home, then what? You know? And then she's like, oh, I never thought of it that way. I said, of course, you don't think of it that way because the doctors want to instill in your brain that, oh, make sure you bring your medication with you so that whenever you feel it, you just take it, right? So yep. it's the same thing like when, you, when you're thirsty, you want to drink. You have to drink water, right? So now what happens is your body, at, the more you take to your body, because this is what people don't understand about our human body is that whatever we take into our body, the first time we take it, our body's like, whoa, what's that, you know? So we're taking it, taking it, taking it, and then your body's like, oh, okay. Oh, that's okay. And then, then you react a certain way. So you keep reacting to the certain way, and as you keep taking it, taking it, taking it, now the body's like, oh, well, if you're going to take this all the time, now I'm just going to adjust. Now I'm used to it, right? So now your body's used to it. That's how your body works, generally. So if you're feeling anxiety and you feel like, oh, there's times where I feel anxiety and I just shut it off right away. I'm just like, okay, well, first of all, why am I feeling like this? That's the first thing I ask myself. Why am I feeling like this? Why is my heart racing? Why do I feel nervous about this? Should I feel nervous about this? Oh, it's because, you know what, maybe I'm just overreacting to certain things. So I'm overreacting, thinking like, oh, I'm going to fail this when really I'm not. Or, oh, this is going to happen when really it's not, right? So I think it's just more of a, not a fallacy, but... We, we're just so used to a pattern of failure or disappointment that, you know, oh, here comes disappointment again, you know, so we anticipate the negativity of it, as a, if that makes any sense. You know? Yeah, it does. And also, too, a lot of people that are have this debilitating anxiety, and they allow it to cripple them in a sense that they're so fearful of having these anxiety attacks out in public or whatever that they choose to withdraw and isolate, which actually amplifies the anxiety. Right. That is right. So anyway, anybody suffering with anxiety out there, I, I understand. I understand completely. I lived with it. I had to see a neurologist because of the swelling around my brain from it. Hey, but I had to fix it. And I can sit here today and say that I do not suffer anxiety today. But yeah, I did for years. Holy cow, over 15 years. Everything made me anxious. Everything. Hmm. Why? Well, because of the life I had to live. It's simple and it was okay. I, I can't beat myself up for it. But you can get past it. And that's what I want you guys all to believe Stop believing that your anxiety has control of you or it will. You know, I encourage you all to take your power back from that today. Just tell yourself in the mirror, I have the power. My body works for me. That's all. Tell yourself that. Sounds crazy, but it works. <laughs> it's true. And this, and this goes into like what I was going to, what, what we were going to talk about, actually, I think we mentioned it uh, Friday, and I think we were supposed to talk about it yesterday, but, you know, it's like the self-talking, right? Like, you know, you keep telling yourself that, okay, you know what, I'm not going to feel this way. You know, I'm not going to let this uh, anxiety, like, I'm going to, I'm going to control this. I have power over this. I'm going to, I'm going to be able to go outside and look at people and not freak out. And, you know, like, this is, this is all like, it's, you know, it's a, it's a self-talk thing. You know, it's the same thing with, you know, addiction, you know, like, you know, you want to do something. I'm not saying it's the exact same thing. I'm just giving, saying an example. So it's like, you know, when you want to, you want, you have that urge. No, I'm not going to, I don't want to do that today. No, I don't want, I'm not going to let the demon come in and, and make, and convince me that I need this drug to be high today. Like, it's, it's, a, it's just a power of self-talking all the time. You know, and the more self-talking you do, the more you're going to start believing yourself, the more you start convincing yourself that, Hey, this is actually working. So once you convince yourself that it starts working, now you want to do it more. And then when you do it more, now you're going to take it up a level because you're like, okay, well, if I can do this for the small stuff that's going on in my life, maybe now I can do it for the big stuff that's going on in my life, right? So, and this is what I think people are misconstruing with, you know, talking stuff into existence and power, the power of positive thinking. But then again, we can't positively think about something that's 
totally outrageous either, right? You know, there's some people that are like, and I hear it all the time, you know, there's people that are like, oh, uh, tomorrow I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win the million dollars. I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're playing the lottery every week with this belief that one day they're going to win it, right? And it's like, okay, you do realize that that's just a chance thing, right? Like, that's all it is. It's just chance. Like, nobody is going to win a lottery because they're destined to win a lottery. They're going to win I can't hear you. No, I said, not everybody's going to win a lottery that are going to be destined to win the lottery. They're going to win a lottery because they just, they're just lucky. That's all it is. It's a game of chance, right? So if you're going to base your life on a game of chance, you know what I'm saying? Like there's only an end result that's going to happen. Either A, you're going to come to the realization that the, pat the way that you're thinking about your self-care is needs to be changed or you're going to spend quite a bit of money to to the point where you realize that 10 years 20 years down the road you know you said 20 years ago that you were going to be a millionaire what happened right oh i'm destined to win the lottery when when <laughs> you know you've been playing this for 20 years five dollars six dollars ten dollars some people spend twenty dollars every week you know it's like that money you spend every freaking week calculate that years. that's your mention there's your winnings right there there's your winnings right there you know it's like uh, i don't know it's crazy but you know my dad was an my dad was an adamant lottery player really eh? oh yeah actually when he when he passed away i've got a list of his of his uh, numbers here that i kept with his obituary and stuff like he was an adamant he loved his beer and his loved his lottery <laughs> <laughs> So the Dip Banner was his favorite place. <laughs> oh dip. yeah, and they knew him. They yeah. knew him. They knew him. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. But um, what was I gonna? How say? much time you have, Wendell? I got about ten minutes. Yeah. Nice. See, do you want to take the floor for five minutes before we wrap up? So, should we do self talk tomorrow? Um. What would you like to talk about tomorrow? Let's set a topic. I don't know. There's just so many things that, you know, there's so many things. that. I... <laughs> so how about we just wing it then tomorrow? You let it, we yeah. sit on it and see how we feel tomorrow morning and we'll bring talks, whatever we feel like talking about then. Yeah, because what I usually do, I'll tell you, I'll tell you actually how most of the topics come is I'll just okay. go through my day. And when I see something or hear something and I'd be like, oh, that's a good topic that I could talk about tomorrow, you know? So that's what I usually do. I just kind of put my ears to the ground and just listen to the world and see what the world's saying. And then I kind of react to it. Whereas I don't really have like a list of all the things that I really want to talk about, right? Other than, you know, like, I think I talked about most of the stuff already that I that I was going to put towards episodes for that man versus woman project that I was, that I was thinking. So I pretty much used all of those, you know, but... Um, but yeah, like I think I think what I'll do is we'll we'll wing it. Well, because it's it's better to when you when you when you get it right on the spot, right? Like right in the moment kind of thing. It's a little bit more, yeah. you know. Guess the brain. Well, that's what to... happened this morning. I saw a couple of messages. Toby need help. Toby need help. I checked an email. Somebody going. Toby, I really really need help now. And so I was like, okay, uh, right. Well, then I guess I got to address anxiety this morning. Okay. So then I did, but I didn't have any, like, that's why I waited a little longer to come on. Because I was like, I don't want to sit there, uh, you know, I'd rather talk to him, whatever topic we're going to talk about. So I came on, did a little whatever opening, but so let's wing it then. All right, so I'll give you the floor to wrap up because I know that uh, your time is limited. Okay. So yeah, so once again, guys, thanks for uh, stopping by and listening to our jibber jabber, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I think the, the only thing that I, the only message that I could give out for today's topic was just that, you know, we're all going to feel a certain way about something, right? And we have to understand that we don't totally, we don't totally <laughs> understand our, um, our, our bodies yet, right? A lot of people think like, oh, I know my body, you know, I know my body, I know my body. Now because of the fact that there's a lot of things that go on in the world that affect us in different ways, in different forms, 
we do not know our body, but we know what we know already based on what we've already experienced. So with that being said, I am a strong believer that, you know, anxiety is something that is created for people to gain from. Um, as human beings, we are built with the proper tutelages here and here, you know, to have control over that anxiety. The problem is, is that we don't have the right people to explain it so that people can get a better understanding as to what anxiety really is. There's a lot of people that, you know, they feel nervous and they're like, oh, that's anxiety, you know, and nervous and anxiety are two different things. They're similar, mm -hmm. but they're two different things, right? Um, so I think that in order for us to overcome this anxiety issue that we're having, I think we need to get a first a better understanding as to what anxiety really is. Once you find out what anxiety really is, then the best way to deal with it, in my opinion, is to maybe do try meditation before medication. Because, you know, medication is, there's a, you don't know what's in that medication. The doctor will tell you what it's in, in the medication, but you don't know what's in that medication, right? So, the problem I find with a lot of people who deal with anxiety is that they get dependent on this medication. So now they have to take it every day. They take it every day. The one day that they don't take it, their whole day is a mess. Their whole mind is a mess. And when you think of how powerful a medication, a pill, one day without a pill can totally change your, your psyche, your mental, your mental awareness, your health, your your decision making, your feelings, like it's a very powerful thing. Like it's a very medication is a very powerful thing. So I'm saying I'm I'm stressing on medication just to say that before you decide to go to the medication right route, make sure that you are aware because sometimes these things are too powerful and they take control over your body. And if you become dependent on this medication, you know. I've seen some medication with side effects of like suicide thoughts and, you know, um, bad dreams and, you know, like, like gastro, like the, the side effects in, in itself just tells you how powerful that medication is. So before you resort to medication, try meditation first. It's not for everybody. I get it. But just try meditation first. And if meditation doesn't work for you, then you just try to find another way of dealing with it. Hey, sometimes it's as easy as taking a walk, clearing your mind, you know, sometimes it's as easy as reading a book or reading. There's uh, some people, they have like this, um, I, and it's funny because I have a, a, a couple people that tell me this, and they have like a, a statement where they kind of, every time when they feel that, they go to the statement, and it's like maybe, I don't know, a 10, 15 minute poem or whatever, and it's written in a way that each word has an impact statement. So once you read this impact statement, you acknowledge the fact that, okay, now I have ownership over my anxiety, and now you move on and you continue your day. So if you can come to that conclusion, where, or if you're creative enough to that level, just try to find a substitute instead of either the medication or the meditation, because again, it doesn't work for everybody. Everybody's different. Some things work better for others. Some things don't work as well for others. So, and then, you know, the ones who actually have kids, you know, sometimes our kids are, are, are good therapy too, you know, go do something with your child, you know, whether it be a game or, you know, uh, a walk or watching a show together, like sometimes that works as therapy too. If, if the actual anxiety is dealing with the child or your, or your children, then yeah, you might want to resort to different ways of dealing with that. But at the end of the day, the point I'm trying to make is, is that, you know, Anxiety, don't fool yourself. You can control your anxiety. You just have to figure out what works and what's best for you and what is non-medicative, um, if you will. Because again, I'm a strong believer that, you know, medication does a lot more worse than it does good. That's just my opinion. You don't, I'm not asking anybody to agree with me, but, you know, that's just my take on it. So if you could find a different way or an alternative method, and dealing with your anxiety, by all means, look into that, whether it be classical music, um, uh, just go and do something that you enjoy when you feel that, right?
right? Whether it be a walk near the water or, you know, a picture of the mountains or just going through, you know, slides where you're watching uh, your favorite place in the world. You could go on YouTube and just watch a five minute video of Egypt and watch the pyramids. And sometimes that could be just enough. The point I'm trying to make is, is just try to find a substitute instead of medication. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I've left the building. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'll address everybody out there this morning. I'm glad you guys dropped in. I'm really grateful for you all. Uh, a couple of reminders. Be grateful that you're alive again today. Simple. You see a limit, get creative. You see an obstacle, obstacle. it's an opportunity to grow. You see a setback, hey, redirect, assess. Don't react. Respond. Simple. Even to your anxiety. You know what? You feel that stuff coming on way before it's out of control. Okay? Now, when you start feeling it come on, Harness that. Breathe. Breathe. Talk yourself down. Because if you can't talk yourself down, nobody can. All right? Seriously. Okay? Guys, I hope you're really getting the most out of your days. You're fueled by an infinite, unconditional love that loves you no matter what. Whether you're anxious, whether you're making excuses for yourself, whether you're copping out, doesn't matter. You're fueled by unconditional love. So, love yourself. Love others. Be loving in all that you say and you do. Simple stuff. Okay? It's all a matter of a series of simple choices. And guess what? That is your choice. Nobody else's. All right? Hey, love and light, Wendell. I want you to have an amazing Bye. day. You have an amazing day, too. And uh, we will be back out here again this tomorrow morning, then. Absolutely. And uh, listen, on that note about the poll, eh? let us know if that's, a, you know, an option. We'll get you out here live on a poll, you know. I'll sell tickets for that event. Gee, <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, Toby, Toby, Toby. Oh, I loved, I loved that post. I sat there and I laughed. I laughed for a good five <laughs> minutes, Wendell. <laughs> so that's why I have to bring it back up because no, you left good. me with such joy. That I wanted to end this off with that same amount of overjoy <laughs> that I felt, you know. That yeah. post was awesome. Seriously. You know, I, I like I like I like to I like to make like, you know, again, we're living in a world where there's so much crap that's going on. Sometimes just that little chuckle can just change a change of direction and that's all I do. That that's the reason why I post that funny stuff is just, you know. Well, that's why I thank you for it and I encourage you to keep well, doing it. Yeah. I really do. I personally really enjoy them. <laughs> oh, nice. All right. I still don't, Love it. I still don't hey. know where Wendelina is, but when I find her, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of bring her back there. You know? Oh, I would love to do a live with Wendelina because I got some <laughs> questions for her, you know. <laughs> I was thinking about that too, actually. I was like, oh, hmm, I've been be thinking just... about that since I saw Wendelina's live. <laughs> And boy, let me tell you, the questions, they keep piling up for her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let me see if I can uh, get her get her on one of these lives. She's very hard to get in contact with. You know, she lives in a cave somewhere. So. She's oh, yeah. Cave. Well, uh, I'll tell you, we'd have quite the robber room session with her. Because <laughs> 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 I see a side there that I don't see on this morning's live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, love and light, Wendell. Have a great day. I'm really thankful for you. I really am really grateful. Yeah, thank you. You too. I love you guys all. Have a great day. Love and light. Peace. Bye. Have a good day, guys. <laughs> <laughs>